the most incredible sticky pork all sandwiched in with a fluffy bao bun. These are my red braised pork bao buns. You wanna be making this for the people you love. Nothing says I love you like a bao bun. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, my friends, this is going to be a bit of a process. Not a hard process, but it will require a little bit of patience. It'll be worth it in the end though, I totally promise. Uh, let's get going on making our red braised pork belly first of all. Now, I just need some soy sauce and you want some dark sweet soy sauce as well. So this is gonna give us a really beautiful deep dark color, which is the kind of characteristic of red braising. Called red braising, but it's kind of a dark mahogany, if you like. And then I want some brown sugar and a few spices here. So I've got some cinnamon sticks, some fennel seeds, and some star anise as well. And now for some fresh aromatics, I want some spring onion, and some ginger. Now just give that a bit of a mix and get that heating up so that sugar starts to dissolve in that sauce. Now let's talk pork belly. So when you're going to buy your pork belly, try and get a nice hefty piece uh, and make sure you don't have too much fat. Not all pork belly pieces are the same. I like to get one with nice layers of meat in there. Actually in Thai we call this mu sam chan, which is translated as three levels. So you kind of get the levels of meat and fat. A Little bit of knowledge you didn't need to know, but there you go. Now, if I have a look at my pork belly and my dish that I've chosen here, you, can't, you don't want a really large roasting tray because you're gonna have to add too much water to kind of get some coverage on the meat. But if I see here, it's not quite gonna fit in as it is. So I'm going to just slice that in half. Two pieces will make it easier to kind of squish in there. And also it means that we've got more surface area for that braising liquid to kind of work its magic. I've got some bubbles happening here. And I'm gonna pop my pork in. Let's see how we go with space. Now add in some water. And I want enough so that my pork belly is gonna be covered when I put a bit of a weight on it. Let's have a look. Let's turn these pieces over. A little bit more water. Now I wanna pop some baking paper on top of this first of all. Now to press that pork down, make sure it's submerged in that liquid while it's cooking. I'm just gonna put a kind of bunch of foil on top. And when I put the lid on, that foil and the pressure of the lid is gonna keep that pork under the braising liquid. Now traditionally, Chinese red braising happens on the stovetop, but I find with low and slow, long stovetop cooking, you're kind of, you know, coming back all the time, gets too hot, it's not hot enough, all that kind of stuff. I just like to pop it in the oven. It's just easier. All right, so you wanna give this about two hours for that pork to get really soft and tender. Okay, so this is smelling incredible. All those beautiful spices and aromatics. Yum, just filling my kitchen with so much joy. Now I did turn the pork over a couple of times just to make sure we get a really beautiful even color. And let's see how we've gone. Ah, oh, look at that. See, that's the color that I'm talking about with traditional Chinese red braising. It's a deep, dark mahogany. Mm, looks so appetizing already. So let's get these guys out onto a tray. Now they're not quite done yet. I'm gonna strain off this braising liquid and then pour that flavor packed liquid straight back over the top of the pork. And now I wanna let this sit in the fridge overnight. One, because it's gonna soak up even more flavor and two, because I want that pork belly to firm up a little bit so I can slice it before grilling. Now just put some baking paper on top of there and then I'm gonna weight this down because that way I'm gonna get a really nice, firm, pressed piece of pork. All right, now into the fridge. Okay, so here we are. Pork has had its time in the fridge. Let's do the big reveal. Still such a beautiful color. Now what we wanna do here is clean up some of the fat that's solidified at the top here. Now take out that pork belly 
save that for a bit later. Now this liquid is like pure gold. Flavor gold, that is. I'm gonna strain it off. Now this is a master stock that you can use for so many different things. Pop it into the freezer, you can use it to braise another cut of meat, braise some chicken, add to noodle soups. Wow, so many different ways to use it, do not waste it. I only need a cup full to finish off my buns here. And I want to let that sauce simmer away until it's really glossy and thickened a little bit. Right, now let's take a look at the rest of our bits and pieces. I've got some of my fluffy homemade bao buns here. So go and check out the video on my YouTube channel or on my Facebook channel. Uh, the recipes on my website as well. They're so incredibly easy to make at home, I promise. <laughs> so give them a try. Uh, now you can also buy store-bought ones, of course. We also need here a spicy mayo because it's me and I like things spicy. Um, so I'm gonna add in some of my coconut sriracha. You could use any kind of hot sauce that you love at home. And just mix that in with some mayonnaise. And then let's get going on our pork. So take one of your pieces. Now this pork is actually really super soft and tender. So it's great that it's been refrigerated because it's gonna make it easier to slice. Otherwise it would just melt away. So I want a fairly generous piece of pork here. Now this is a great idea for when you've got people over because you can do all of this in advance. You can get your pork sliced up, your sauce done, bao buns made, and then at the last minute, all you need to do is sear off your pork belly. And this is the fun part. So once the pork's had a couple of minutes on that first side, let's turn the pieces over and you need to be gentle here because as I said, that pork is uber tender, very soft. Oh, look at that beautiful color and it's just about to get even better. Take some of that reduced sauce and drizzle that over the top. Now give these guys another couple of minutes here. I really want the sauce and the pork and the heat to work its magic. All right, so that pork, check it out. I mean, it's like its own little work of art in there. Ah, oh, it's almost too good to disturb, almost. <laughs> All right, let's get our bun together. Now open up your bun here, add some of the spicy sauce, and now just some finely shredded cabbage. We want a little bit of crunch and freshness here. And then of course you want a piece of pork. Now a smattering of spring onion and some crushed roasted peanuts. And there you go. You can pile those up or you can serve the pork and the bao buns and everything so everyone can help themselves. Don't forget to add a little bit of extra spicy sauce here at the end, just because you know, everyone needs some extra spicy. Let me pick out the perfect specimen. Who am I kidding, they all look perfect. See how we've gone. Mm. That is incredible. That super soft pork is sticky and sweet and fragrant. Mm. And that spicy cut through at the end is so perfect. You want to be making this for the people you love. Nothing says I love you like a bow button. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one, and that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks, guys. Boot.